Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode in this uh, Deep Learning with PyTorch series. So in the last few videos, uh, we specifically talked about like uh, what would be the core structure. Then in the last video, I mainly talked about how to set up a machine learning problem. Uh, and in this video, we will uh, generally focus on what is the motivation for you to learn deep learning, right? And uh, what are the key focus areas or key application areas of deep learning in the industry or in, in practical real life scenarios which we have seen um, in the recent times, right? Yeah, so let's get started. Um, so generally deep learning, uh, if you compare machine learning with deep learning, right? So generally we use deep learning for the large unstructured data set, right? And in case of machine learning, uh, we have to use a structured data set. Then only we can make predictions or we can find patterns, right? And uh, it has been seen in like past seven or eight years that for unstructured data, deep learning wills like very well, like we uh, need to do very less feature engineering on top of this large unstructured data set so that the deep learning models works well on on top of that right but if you want to use unstructured data set for uh, doing any machine learning or regular machine learning uh, models you have to convert this large unstructured data set to a structured data set right which will uh, introduce a concept called manual feature extraction. Say uh, for this example, like which I am showing in the screen, uh, like we have set up images and we are trying to identify uh, what is the type of bird, right? So we need to do some kind of manual feature extraction from the images, like what is the beak length, what is the wing span, and what is the primary color of that bird. And based on that, we can make certain predictions on top of that uh, on each uh, on top of each of the images right uh, but in case of deep learning uh, we can straight away use this uh, images and with minimal data preparation pre pre data preparation steps we can use uh, uh, our deep learning model and build a working model right uh, so this can be one of the motivations for you like working with when working with uh, unstructured images unstructured data like images or unstructured data like uh, text so you can use uh, deep learning models which generally performs well well compared with the regular machine learning uh, models right uh, then uh, there is another re reason which uh, which is one of the reason for sudden growth of deep learning right the large amount of data generation, right? Starting from your smart devices, which you are wearing, uh, and then from your mobile, from your computer, everywhere there is a huge amount of data that has been uh, started generating starting from around 2000 uh, uh, years, right? Uh, so from that time onwards, there is a huge scale of data that is available. So if you, it has been seen that with the amount of data, and if you measure different types of machine learning or deep learning uh, models and you like plot the performance of the models along with the amount of data in the x-axis you will see whenever uh, the amount of data is very less right so amount of data like uh, number of rows of your data set which you have gathered that is very less right so in that case your traditional machine learning problems or traditional machine learning models will perform well well compared to a, any of the deep learning models so that deep learning model can be a shallow neural network or a medium uh, medium sized neural network or a deep neural network so in that case your traditional machine learning algorithms will perform well so this is the re region which i am highlighting here right so beyond that like when we have uh, started gathering huge amount of data when we have got uh, several unstructured data several number of rows in our data set for unstructured data then it has been seen that after certain amount of data your uh, deep learning models will start performing better while compared to the traditional machine learning problem right and uh, so uh, so there are certain amount of data that you need so that is also one of the constraint for deep learning models that at least you need to have a good amount of data to uh, start training a deep learning model 
right? Uh, but that's also advantageous in this scenario, in this in this age, right? We have huge amount of data available to train any machine learning, uh, any deep learning models, right? So for an example, a GPT has been trained with over the whole internet, right? So it like uh, OpenAI kind of scrapped the whole internet and they kind of trained a deep learning attention based model on top of that data, which is like giving you a state of the art uh, performance, right? So with the huge amount of data availability, now more or less people are shifting to deep neural networks, right? Whether it's structured or unstructured data, all the solutions are mainly based on top of uh, deep neural networks, right? So two motivations which I have talked about so far. So uh, if you want to use unstructured data in case of traditional machine learning algorithm, you need to do the manual feature extraction, which is not required if you use a deep learning model on top of that. And then with the, the huge amount of data availability, now your uh, model performance or the uh, model output will be much more accurate in case of if you are using deep neural networks, right? While well, compared to the traditional machine learning algorithms. Then uh, let's talk about a few various uh, deep learning applications, right? So uh, the example which I uh, told you, right? Uh, the OpenAI example, like OpenAI built chat GPT on top of the whole internet, like they scrapped huge amount of blogs, books, ebooks, and like um, several papers, journals, and using that data, they kind of trained a model which kind of uh, make uh, or which kind of generate new text on top of the uh, given prompt, right? And also it uh, like the thing which I forgot to mention, like the OpenAI also kind of use the GitHub codes to train the model so that it also has the capability to generate codes. So if you ask it to write a particular type of code in Python and it, it, it will start giving you the output and it will write a function to do perform that specific task which you mentioned in the prompt, right? So this kind of thing is possible with the use of deep learning applic with the deep learning models, right? Which was previously not possible with uh, traditional machine learning algorithms, right? So some of the other examples like uh, you will see like colorization of black and white images. So it you might have seen over the internet like uh, the, all the historical images, uh, uh, like some of the historical images which are present present over the internet that has been converted to a, a colored images, right? Then it can also add sounds to the silent movies, right? Some of the things which we use in our day to day life is like machine translation, right? We, we use Google machine translation to convert uh, one language text to another language of text, right? And um, so a few of the other examples like object detection from photographs, which is uh, heavily used in case of Facebook uh, photo tagging. Um, then we can also do automatic hand uh, handwritten digit recognition or text generation uh, or recognition. Uh, then a text or code generation, which I already talked about, like using chat GPT or, or one of the recent models like Llama 2. Right, and we we can also generate a caption to an image. So you can feed an image to a model, and that model will generate uh, a caption out of that. Looking at that image, right, which we human can easily do. So it's all about mimicking the human behavior uh, using a deep learning model, right? And automatic game playing. We I have also talked about in last session. Like we can use a reinforcement learning algorithm to teach a machine learning algorithm uh, to play a certain game and also to how it can optimize its steps to win the game also, right? So if you look at the trend of Google search, right? And in terms of years in the x-axis and average monthly search searches in the y-axis. So you'll see like starting from 2016, right? 2016 on time onwards, the deep learning trend has got uh, rapidly increased and you will see like the traditional machine learning algorithms like SVM, decision tree or k-means those are kind of stagnant after like uh, from 2016. So uh, one of the reasons for also this rapid growing of deep learning is the hardware capability which we are currently getting right the easy accessibility of GPU like you can easily access 
uh, GPU in Kaggle or in Google Colab, where you can at least start trying out different uh, deep learning models, right? Which was previously not available. So in case of uh, companies like Google or OpenAI, they have huge number of GPUs through which you can uh, through which they can train a state of the art deep learning models, right? Which was previously not available. So here are some of the other uh, use cases which you can also think of like input data is like housing property details and the output is like house price prediction, right? So application area in the real life scenario is real estate, real estate, right? So and you generally use a multi-layer perceptron or a multi-layer uh, neural network to do this regression kind of uh, modeling in using the uh, structured data. Right, so similarly in case of online advertising, you can also do a, a click prediction like whether a user will uh, click certain ad or uh, information in which is available in case of a website or a blog, uh, right? So or a promotional event, right? So that also you can build using a multi-layer perception and that is kind of a classification task which you can do using structured or unstructured data set. Then using uh, some of the unstructured data like images or text, it can do a object uh, identification or a machine translation task. So generally we use convolutional neural network in case of object detection or computer vision task, or we use uh, a sequence to sequence uh, modeling using RNN on LSTM to do the machine translation task. Then we can also build uh, autonomous driving using like images, videos or streaming data, and um, it uses the algorithm like hybrid or deep reinforcement learning. And and the last example which I mentioned in this slide is like which is like nowadays is uh, taking the Internet by storm, right? Uh, like you give a prompt to a model and prompt will start giving you a answer to that particular prompt. Right, so which we uh, generally use in case of chat GPT and also like open source models like Llama 2 or few other open, open source models, which uses the concept of attention based mechanism using large language models, right? So all these use cases you can uh, do if you if you know the very basics of deep learning, right? Uh, and all these use cases are in, in the back end is using a deep learning model, right? So yeah, so these are the some of the motivational things which I wanted to uh, give you a heads up so you can um, get a more interest if you wanted to start learning a deep learning. So it's it's never late, right? Uh, to start learning a new thing, right? So yeah, this is all about which I had in this uh, video. So in the in the next session, I will start doing the groundwork for neural network where uh, we will go through how we can uh, like how uh, the linear regression and logistic regression model works and we will see the math behind that so math will involve a few sort of uh, taking derivatives and doing optimizations so all the all this will start from the next video and that will kind of set the groundwork for uh, taking you to the uh, taking you to the world of uh, deep deep learning and neural networks right so yeah thanks for your time i hope you like this video thank you